We now invite you to listen to part three, the questions and answers section of this insightful lecture titled How Suffering Can Lead Us to Happiness, given by Supreme Master Ching Hai in Sydney, Australia on March 16, 1993. If Allah, Buddha, or Jesus were alive today, would they be greenies? Greeny is someone who is environmentally conscious. Understand, understand. Ah, yeah, that is the new party which protects the environment, yeah. right? Partially, perhaps, yes. <laughs> you see, we should protect the greenery as much as possible for our own benefit. But we should not become a natural worshipper, whereby every tree worth more than human beings. Yes, trees are for human beings. So in case we need them, we should preserve them as much as our space, time, and the population allow. So in that case, probably Jesus and Allah, whoever, <laughs> would vote for that. <laughs> I'm also a nature preserver myself, and all our practitioners are not allowed to cut trees unnecessarily. Yes, we better see to the situation, where we should preserve and when and how much. As you said, enlightenment will cause us to ignore everything, such as wealth, illness, or a higher position in society. I agree with your point of view about in ignoring wealth, but how about illness? We suffer every minute. Illness causes incredible pain and misery. How can we ignore that? We just do not feel so much suffering the way we did before enlightenment, that's all. We will tend to our body as much as we can. We give it as much comfort as it needed, and we give the medical care and all that. Should we have to suffer from illnesses, our patience, our enduring power increase, and therefore the illness doesn't bother us much. I do not say we ignore it completely. It doesn't bother us that much. And even uh, after enlightenment, many of our illness just <laughs> disappear. It is not miracles. It is because our superpower self awaken and regulate some of the misconstructing part in our body and destroy it. So s many people found themselves with no more cancer. <laughs> and even though they were already put on the operating table and anesthetic needle were already admitted to them. But then the doctor found to their amazement that no more cancer is there. So he was pushed outside again. So <laughs> we don't ignore the illness. Illness seems to ignore enlightened people. I have the need to be more spiritual towards all life. How do I react to the negativity around me? If we have a spiritual tendency, then we have more tolerance towards all things, including negative influences and also any negative outlook in life. We'll be more tolerant, more understanding, and also our positive self will radiate somewhat these healing energies which corrects somewhat the negative atmosphere. We don't need to do anything, really, if we are truly spiritual. Things will uh, better themselves in some degree. And should that person come to us for advice or want to better himself also, then we will be in a position to tell him what to do or suggest what to do. You said during the course of your talk, that once we were perfect, but are not now. What circumstances led us to this situation? We are lost in the circus, and we enjoy so much the circus <laughs> that we forgot our home. If someone come and just tap us on the shoulder and say, oh, you don't belong here, you have enough now, now you're hungry, you're cold, you should not stick here, go home and then have some comfort. 
Dear Master, there is always a fear of the unknown. How can one be certain that the Guanin method is the right one? Of course, you don't know until you try. But as you see from our outlining principle, you can see that even if Guanin method doesn't do you any good or you're not certain of the benefit of Guanin method, one thing you can be certain that it will do you no harm. No harm if you eat vegetarian diet, at least you're healthy. If you don't believe in any spiritual compassion at all, it's proved scientifically that vegetarian diet is healthy for you. Okay, so one standpoint. And the so-called five precepts are to protect you from the uneasiness of mind. You should have only a very loving and one-pointed relationship. Uh, you do not take what doesn't belong to you, and you do not uh, gambling, which causes misery to yourself and others and your family. You do not take alcohol, and to make your mind, your vision blurred, and you do not take drugs, it's no good for you. From all these very apparent so-called material guidelines, at least you know that our teaching, our method, will benefit you somewhat. And from then you start, and you get to know better, and at least we offer you somewhat immediate proof of enlightenment. And at least we don't cast any money for it, before, between, and after. And you have no condition, no binding whatsoever. Suppose even afterward you don't want us, we also don't do anything to you. So in any way, you don't lose anything, you will only gain. And that is the symbolic thing I can tell you. But moreover, you must use your intuitive wisdom to ascertain which path to follow. Doesn't matter what I say, you have to know it. And pray to your inner self, to God, to Jesus, to Allah, to Buddha, whoever, to help you to decide. And if you see a stronger pull to come to us, then you know it is for you. Should you not feel it, or you feel stronger pull into the world, all right, then you're not yet ready. It's very simple. Are you connected with the Great White Brotherhood? The White Brotherhood originally denoted those who are highly advanced beings. Of course, probably in that sense, then I also belong there. <laughs> but we belong to the Almighty, belong to ourselves. That is the surest. Huh? That's the only certain answer I can give you. We belong to a group <laughs> of making you yourself better, making you become a master. Your student seem to worship you a lot and consider you like a god, a supreme being. Do you have any comments on their worshipping attitude towards you? I have no comment. They do what they want, they're free to worship or not worship me. I don't advocate worshiping myself or me or anyone at all. I always told them that the greatness is yours. Whatever miracles you have, Whatever things that occur to you, it is because you are on spiritual path, because you practice yourself, because your own great wisdom is awakened and help you. Hmm? If they worship me or not worship me, uh, make no effect on me. But I can't stop people. I can't stop them. I can't go to each one of them and repeat the same thing all the time. I can only give a general guideline, but they, just the way they are. People are like that. Well, they will grow out of it, don't worry. But that's good for them, it's good for them. They have one point. It. <laughs> I do them no harm, and if they remember me, it's better than they remember the devil. Hmm? <laughs> what do you think of sex? If you condemn sex, then you must condemn mud. But do not forget, a lotus flower comes out of mud. Uh, you repeat what somebody else is saying. If it's from you, I still accept it, but you repeat it from another so-called master. Is that right? I never condemn sect, do I? Did I in any lecture or in my lecture condemn sect? So, I guess you want to 
air your view. But it's not your view, it's somebody else's view. So it's better you get enlightened yourself and have your comments on sex. Hmm? You see, I never condemn sex at all, but I do not advocate teaching or encouraging or always reminding people of sex. These things all the animals can do anyhow. What's the big deal about it? That we have to condemn or worship. Hmm? I don't think we should even mention it. Never mind to make it a theme of teaching or the important topic. It's nothing important. Hmm? If I condemned sex, I wouldn't be here. My parents would be dead, huh? And the Buddha never born. <laughs> How do you learn to love yourself? Do we need to learn this? After enlightenment, we know that we are all right. That's all I can tell you. It's all right, the way I am. I don't know if I love myself or not. I just know I'm all right. I'm okay. <laughs> um, I just uh, just a question from the book, the sample of the thing that I have, page forty. Uh, just a query. Now in the Bible, we have a thousand sentences which says, "Animals are your food." Well, reading from the Bible, Matthew chapter fifteen. Um, verse 17, Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drought? The first things which proceed from the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the man. It's not what goes in that makes a man unclean, but what comes from his heart. And the other two references I'd like to turn to is from the book of Acts, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Peter, as you know, one of Jesus' greatest disciples, he said that he had he went, he went into a trance and he became hungry and would have eaten. And he saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and left down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed things of the earth, and wild things, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has meant, call not thou. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Sir. In the first uh, paragraph that you read in Matthew, it didn't mention meat at all. Probably Jesus at that time mentioned that because some of the people are so attached to whether eating pig or not eating pig. And certain food that they don't eat, but other food they can eat. So probably Jesus mentioned that. But he didn't say meat at all. A second, suppose Peter has seen all these but in his vision only. And whatever God created with God's power through a visionary revelation, it is not real. It's not the fleshly, material flesh that God has wanted him to eat. Similarly, in Buddhist scriptures, there was a paragraph inside the Surangama Sutra. The Buddha mentioned that in the early days of my preaching, there are many monks who come from a different background and countries. They are not used to with eating vegetarian food. Therefore, I manifested some so-called meat for them to eat through my power, magical power. But later on, if any monk eats meat, 
they are not my disciples because the meat I manifested to them is not the real meat. I guess in this sense, both the Bible and the Sura Gama Sutra of the Buddhist uh, say the same thing. You see, in the Old Testament, God never mentioned that we should eat meat. He said, I create all the beautiful fruits for you in the field and all the herbs in the garden. These are your food. In the Buddhist Sutra, uh, Buddha said, if you use the sound and the light to see me, mm -hmm. you can't see the Buddha. But in your book, you said about the light and sound. Please tell me what difference between the light, the sound, in the Buddhist Sutra and your teaching. The Buddha didn't say the light and the sound. The Buddha said if you use the apparent form, the phenomena form, to worship me, I worship my phenomenal form, then you could not see the Buddha. He means you could not see the Buddha nature. But he did not mean the light and sound, which is invisible to the eyes and inaudible to the flesh ear. That's the difference. These are transcendental light and sound, which will help you get wiser and more peaceful and more loving. The Buddha means if we cling to the ordinary form of the Buddha, doesn't matter how he appear on earth, or we cling to kind of idol worship, then we could never find our own Buddha nature. It doesn't mean this light and sound. Dear Master, do you think the God uh, discrimination human or not? If yes, why do God not give everybody the same skin color, the same hair, same languages? Human will not uh, meet any problem about language, and any discrimination on skin color uh, maybe lead to the world and uh, violence. Please explain this for me. God does give whatever you have just mentioned to us. But we have chosen to be in this dual stage because we like it. Should you want to be equal again and each one look the same again in glory and beauty, then please join the heavenly hierarchy. And uh, that's why I am here to show you how to do it, to go back to the non-discriminating state. You have the choice either to be here in this colorful dimension or to go into the dimension where there is no discrimination between the sexes, between the uh, height, between the uh, rich and poor, and the color of the skin, etc. Hmm? You see, why God gave us so much of this so-called color? Because He is very loving. Because we want whatever we want, we get it. Yeah? He also gives us other choice. Therefore, we have many choices. That's why he gives us also this kind of word and also many other kinds of words. Like Jesus mentioned, in my father's house, there are many mentions. So uh, if you don't like this word the way it is, it's all right. Y you come to the other word, and, and we know the way. We can guide you. Hmm? Okay. And those who do not like to go to the other world, it's all right the way you are. You stay here and do what you want. <laughs> Therefore, we don't force people to follow us at all. We just offer the opportunity for those just like you who want to go into that kind of dimension. Yeah? Every world, every um, place has its regulation and rules. So if you want to abide by that rules and regulation, then you stay in that place. If not, there are other kind of regulation and rules for you, for yourself. For example, the Vietnamese or the Chinese who immigrate to Australia, even though they still were so-called Chinese or Vietnamese, they have to abide by the rule of Australian government, whether they like it or not. They should never bother to ask why driving on the left side and not the right side. In my country, I always ride the right side. Why so complicated to ride on the left side? But that's the way it is. If you want to be in Australia, you just do it, make it simple, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, please tell me, the Buddha sounds, either sounds of the music or the word or the voice. Oh, this is like musical. 
seems like, but it's not exactly like the music of our world. It's uh, indescribable. It has indescribable effect on us. It's a symbol of the inner wisdom. And the more we hear it, uh, the better we become and wiser we become. Not the voice, not the spoken word. Sometimes, sometimes it can be, but it's not generally. We want a good result in meditation. Do you think we need to receive initiation from a real master for protection and introduction? If we haven't received the initiation and we meditate, what happens? Uh, you see, you have so many people that had trouble when they try to meditate alone without an experienced guide. It's a little bit adventuresome. But if you can do it alone, it's all right. You'll find enlightenment if you can do it alone. Uh, just that in the general, it's better to have a, a teacher, just like uh, you learn English with a teacher, or you learn playing Kung Fu with a teacher. It's safer, quicker, and save a lot of time, and also save you a lot of unnecessary uh, mistakes and downfall. Uh, I have read through your book and your lecture, and we recognize it. You didn't discriminate between this religion to another one. You always get some of uh, the world from uh, teachers, from Buddha and another real master. Can you tell me your religion uh, you are using now is uh, make a good relation between some of religion or not? I do not advocate a particular religion anywhere because we have enough religion. And if a Buddhist should adhere strictly to the Buddhist rules and scriptures, he is a good Buddhist already. If a Christian uh, truly live according to the commandments, then he is a good Christian already. So I have no intention and also not necessary for me to advocate that you should follow Christian or Buddhist. We have enough churches and temples who teach people to be Buddhist or Catholic or Christian. But we help the Buddhists to get in touch with the Buddha nature, <laughs> help the Christian to know the kingdom of God, should they desire to know, should they desire to know. It's a, only an offering, an offer only, and no condition, no force, no money between, before and after, no binding involved, and no religious background or meditational experience are required, absolutely unconditional. Hmm? If I belong to one religion, uh, such as a Buddhist or Catholic, today I want to receive initiation from you. Uh, do I need to, to leave my religion? No, the you don't need to leave your religion. I told you already, you can go to the church every Sunday or every day. I just teach you how to talk to God directly <laughs> in your church if you wish to. Hmm? The Master, I don't believe any religions, but I have done a good job to everybody, and I try to make our neighbor happy, also to my father too. So if we die, can we go to the heaven? Sure you can. Sure you can. This kind of person are the religions teach us to be. Surely you'll be in heaven. But how long it lasts, I cannot assure you. Because your marriage is also limited. Uh, because if you're good to one father, maybe in 70 years, then maybe you have uh, 70 years of heaven. <laughs> and later on, uh, probably we have to go back again and do other marriage. Uh, but if we are truly enlightened and get direct contact with uh, God while here, then we can ask for anything. And then we don't have to go back again if we don't desire to go back. Thank you for all your love and your excitement and all your questions. You. you love because you recognize I am yourself. You are excited because you care. You care about my lecture and what I say. Thank you both. Yeah, I see you around.